Hey everyone, my name is Sean and welcome to another figure unboxing. Today we've got another big one. I ordered this from Solaris Japan and paid about 250-ish US dollars including shipping. Let's get right into it. Ooh. Nice and securely packaged. Despite all of that, it's got a pretty ridiculously large box damage on it. Hopefully, I mean, I'm sure everything's fine on the inside, but that's for paying for premium quick shipping. That's a little annoying, but I've never been too big on box damage. Although I guess I am when it comes to big, expensive figures. But as you can see, we've got the Azra Ninja 2-1 scale pre-painted figure by Kotobukiya. She is based off the model kit here that I got this year in January. Also, we'll probably do a video on this as well, a build along. But when it says two to one scale, it means from her, cause she's considered a one to one scale. So it's basically double the size of the model kit. And so for a quick reference, here's a frame arms girl, go Rai, that I'm doing a custom paint job for. So this is, a, it's both Kotobukiya, they're interchangeable basically. So Ninja will probably be about, whoops. <laughs> Ninja will probably be about this tall when she's finished. So let's just get right into it box damage got the thing kind of pinned in here it's a little hard to get out but there we go all right it looks like this will be kind of a long video because it looks like there's actually a lot of stuff in here to check out so i'll change the camera view to set it up a little better and we'll get on with the next stuff first of all is the base very simple but very good quality feeling stuff here nice metal pegs in here to attach but let's just get right into her looks like we got some connection points here where things can come apart uh let's lay her back down for a second it comes with instructions here so the head is removable got lots of little knife accessories and even some scarf pieces some more swords changeable changeable hands little techie looking mech pieces and a full stand with a leg and stuff let's do our best to detach these parts to remove the plastic So I'll put her back for a second and let's talk about the head. And it's honestly not my favorite. <laughs> she, I mean, look at that. She's like creeped out in distress, something all at once. So yeah, the one thing I'm not particularly happy about is the head. I knew what I was getting into. Oh, well, let's move on. All right, next we're gonna put her on the base, but to do that, I had to open the accessories box. Some really good looking stuff here. I mean, oh, dude, this piece. Like, mm, the plastic, it feels different than typical, how do I say, scale figure plastics I found. Not sure what it's made out of. It feels pretty rigid and good quality, but might snap more easily because it feels stiff and brittle. Don't know, but man, does this look cool. <laughs> But yeah, so this is the stand piece. So we'll just take that out and I'll get her up on the base and we'll be right back. All right. Pretty simple process. Just lightly attach this. It's not that tight of a fit, which is nice. Don't have to worry about getting too stuck in there. A nice metal pole, at least. Eh, maybe not actually metal. <laughs> and yeah, she's huge. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah. Let's just do a 360 here. 
plastic is really rigid and stiff so it doesn't spin too well on the table. And if you've seen my channel before, actually, I don't think I've ever shown this on camera. You're getting a sneak peek here. <laughs> if you're only here for the figure and you're not a subscriber or anything, you don't care, feel free to skip ahead a few seconds. But as you know, this is my traditional <laughs> turntable. It's literally this circle piece of wood I found in my basement, painted it white, then drilled a hole into it and put this Lego tire wheel on it to help it stick to the ground, but also still be turnable. If I use that, she gets <laughs> so big. Actually, it doesn't work too bad, but it's hard to get her fully in frame. So we'll just stick with this. All right, welcome back to any of you who skipped head. She looks great. From where I'm sitting and up close and everything, the plastic is amazingly well done. It feels, I don't know if they did this on purpose, but it kind of feels like model kit plastic, just like a slightly higher quality, which would make sense because she's like based on a model kit. And her skin and stuff feels like traditional. Okay, that. That's, <laughs> I just realized what I was doing. That's kind of weird. <laughs> um, yeah, her skin actually feels a little. I did it again. I'm sorry. It's, it's just a figure, okay? I'm just testing the quality of it. Yeah, the plastic feels unique. Maybe it's just because it's a higher quality plastic that I don't get with usual figures, so it feels different to the touch. But yeah, she's really cool. The face, uh, the face, it just, whatever. I also forgot to show you this. It was covered in the plastic. You get another, another leg with torn up tights for you. Tai Otaku's out there. I don't know if I'll ever use this. It's, but apparently you use that leg to match up or to put her in a different position. So this is probably why this piece is so easily removable. It's because she's not meant to always stay on here. I did not know this came with it. I thought this was just something they used in the promo pics as like an example. And of course, a lot of the sites you buy from are written in Japanese. And even if you translate them with like the Google auto translate, it doesn't translate all the text on the page. You get this really, really soft, officially licensed Kotobukiya blanket. <laughs> oh my gosh. Or like pillow thing. It's super, holy crap, soft. Like, geez. And, ooh, tight fit. Actually, no, listen. yeah, I would say it's really easy to take her off the sand, which obviously was intentional. So you change the leg out, so you'll have the kind of ripped tights with the toes sticking out, which would then get rid of this. So I guess, I mean, might as well do it, why not? Yeah, I kind of can understand why they picked that face. And I'm not too happy about it. <laughs> if you're a seasoned anime veteran, you might kind of understand what's going on in this situation, despite me hating to admit that I can see it. I don't like it. <laughs> I'll probably never pose her like this, ever, ever. But yeah, this just isn't doing it for me. You can kind of see what's going on. She's, I guess this is like a futon, a futon, and you know, you got her down and, okay, we're moving on. <laughs> All right. I will say the instructions are very, very straightforward and they even have English instructions. So I skipped the process of showing you how everything was attached. It would have made this video a lot longer. And like I said, really easy to figure out with the instructions. All I really have to say is to make sure you take off the head before trying to put on this arm blade thing. And to take off the handles first when at trying to attach the handheld weapons. But she looks pretty freaking cool. <laughs> I really, uh, I know I'm harking, I'm, I know I'm going on and on about the stupid face, but seriously, if this was just a slightly more aggressive action face, she would look so epic right now with all these <laughs> weapons and stuff. Like, ah, oh, man, she looks really, really cool. This is obviously just the unboxing, so the review will be a little more in-depth from, from, just first impressions from what I've seen. The figure is really well done. No gapping, no visible glue. The plastic feels amazing. There are a few little 
just dusts. It's just dust as far as I can tell. So far, literally, probably 8 out of 10 just because the face. Which you could say like, bruh, bruh, you knew that getting into it. But in the end, despite how much I don't like the head, she's still really epic looking. <laughs> like... Will, would I not buy this figure just because the faceplate bothers me? Probably not. Oh yeah, she looks <laughs> really good. Really, really, really happy with this figure in every aspect but the head. Here is the 1-6 scale Ryza figure I just reviewed bef before this video. So as you can see, she's a little bigger than a 1-6 scale figure, but all that aside, super cool, and either way, and oh, and I'll start the Azra Ninja model kit build along. If you want it to be a part series, leave a comment if you're interested in the build along model kit. If you want it to be like parts where I just do part one, part two, part three, or just do the whole fig like model kit in one video, it'll take like a month for the video to come out because time constraints, blah, blah, blah. But, and I'll do, but I'll do time lapses and stuff and we'll talk about it. Then we'll maybe compare them both at the end of the video. But yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of this. I wish you the best in all your figure collecting adventures. Farewell, my friends. Let's cut to the music and show her off handheld, shall we?